Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel, my name is Debbie B. Today's video <laughs> is cult, American Horror Story cult. This is going to be interesting one to talk about because this season was politics based. So I'm going to have to tread carefully here. So cult is the seventh season of American Horror Story premiered September 5th, 2017, takes place in the fictional suburb of Brookfield Heights. And the first episode begins with Donald Trump winning the US presidential election 2016. So, yeah. Politics based. This is going to be a fun one to talk about. If, mind the weird angle of today's video, my chair has been lost to downstairs for a roast dinner. We're having ten, there's going to be ten of us at dinner today. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so my chair is gone from my desk, so I'm filming this at an angle where I can get the light from outside, it's not too dark, and I'm literally sat crisscross applesauce on my bed. So, so returning cast members, We've got Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, Cheyenne Jackson, John Carroll Lynch, Charles Bono, Edina Porter, James Morosini, Emma Roberts, Mayor Winningham, Francis Conroy and Jamie Brewer. It was nice to see Jamie Brewer because we hadn't, didn't see her that much. With new cast members Billy Lord and Alison Pill. I really like Billy Lord. I've realised with this other season that I've just finished watching uh, that um, Billy Lord is amazing. Yeah. Seems cult received mostly positive reviews from critics with Paulson Peters and Porter receiving uh, Saturn Award nominations for their performances, with both Paulson and Porter nominated for Outstanding Lead Actress and Outstanding Supporting Actress at the Emmy Awards. Evan Peters in this season was incredible. Totally believable and I hated him. I hated him as Kai. And then as you go through the season, you hear more of his story and you're just like, that character completely encompasses the mind space of people who are just so easily swayed and shows how easy it is to fall into a cult when you don't really know what you stand for. And you've got the politicians lying and saying, oh, well, this is a problem, so in essentially creating the problem, which is what he does. And it's just so interesting to see a series that just completely embodies what so many of us know what politics is and so many people don't realise what politics is. And encompassing that all into Kai Anderson, which is the whole thing of creating a problem so that they can say they're going to fix it. A lot of people don't realise that politicians do this. The only reason I'm more aware of it as I've gotten older is for the fact that my dad was a civil servant. And so when I have these deep conversations with my father about politics and he was just like, yeah, what you're hearing is the noise. You want to see what they're not talking about. And if they say that something's a problem and you've never heard it before, it's quite possible they're going to create it. So it's very, very interesting. Uh, Evan Peters plays a lot of people in this season because as well as playing Kai he also plays infamous people who the character looks up to including like Jim Jones, Jesus and Charles Manson. Um, the whole Charles Manson episode was really horrible and I think it's horrible because it was based on a true story. It's interesting seeing the relationships between characters as you go through and realising how people become related, especially with the character of Dr. Rudy Vin Vincent, which is um, Ali's, Sarah Paulson's character's uh, therapist. And as you go through and you realise that Dr. Rudy Vincent has a connection to two other characters that you don't realise until it's obviously explicitly stated. Alison Pill was incredible in this season. I hadn't seen her in anything in a while. The character of Ivy, because basically it's about Ali and Ivy as uh, in a same-sex relationship and their son. And Ali's reaction 
to Trump getting into office. Because uh, it basically, Trump is the epitome of everything the wrong in the world, according to Ali. And Trump getting into office brings up a lot of her insecurities and a lot of her fears. And they manifest more after the election and after Trump gets in. So her fear of clowns gets escalated. Her Just a lot of her internal fears just become so much bigger after the election. And she blames Trump for it. Not to say that, that she should have done that, because really it's just... One of her biggest fears was Trump getting into office, and when that happens, it just makes everything else seem so much bigger. So really, it could have been anything that triggered off all the rest of her fears. But in this case, it was Trump is the catalyst for all her internal fears coming true, in a way. So the relationship between Ali and Ivy, and the way it progresses, it's impressive and disturbing and as things kind of click together as you go through and you realise the, the depth of the character of Ivy there's just so much to unpack in this season I love the introduction of Leslie Grossman as Meadow their new neighbour I love Leslie Grossman I think the first thing I ever saw Leslie Grossman in was an Amanda Bynes sitcom style thing, which I'm not quite sure what channel it was originally for, but I think it aired in the UK on Nickelodeon. Um, it was called What I Think About You with Jenny Garth. Was it What I Think About... It's something along the lines of that, but that was the first thing I ever saw Leslie Grossman in, and I thought she was hilarious in that, and she's just a fantastic medium. She's absolutely brilliant. Uh, Chaz Bono in this uh, season... God, the scene with Gary when he wants to go out and vote and they're trying to stop him from voting because they think that he's just another one that's going to add to the Trump votes and he's there going, I have my right to vote and yeah, there's just a scene which basically involves him chopping off his own arm oh I've said it before, I don't do well with depictions of bones being broken and the fact that in that scene he essentially, he saws his own arm off and oh, can you tell it just makes me really squeamish. Lena Dunham was in this season playing a real person and I'll admit I've got my thoughts and feelings about Lena Dunham but as an actress in this season she was actually brilliant. Despite what you think of her as a person, as an actor, she was very believable. I'll admit, when I first started watching this season, the first season had a bit of a throwback to Freak Show, and I thought I was watching the wrong season at first. I saw the first five minutes and just thought, oh, have I accidentally put on Freak Show? And then I, so I came out of it, went back in again, I was just like, oh wait, no. It's similar, but it's different, because it turns out that Ali and Ivy's son, Oz, has a bit of a thing about killer clowns, and the clown, Twisty the Clown, becomes a comic book in this season, and there's a lot about clowns, <laughs> and I don't do well with clowns. I got Tim Curry as a clown burned into my brain from when I was little. How... I don't ever remember watching it all the way through, so I don't know how that image is in my brain. Um, I've obviously suppressed where I saw it. Maybe I caught my dad watching it or something, I don't know. But yeah, that image is seared into my brain, which has made me kind of terrified of clowns. So the fact that that's a big theme of this season is killer clowns is horrible. <laughs> the way Kai kind of creates the problem and then says he's going to fix it just is completely disturbing. And as you go through and you realise, because there was a point, I think it was in like the first or the second episode, where Ali realises, because it basically pulls in something that actually happened. You, I'm not sure if it was the year that Trump got in. I just remember, I don't, I, I've no idea what year this actually happened. But when there were clowns just going around terrorising people, it was a real thing that happened. And I'm 
cannot remember when it happened but it was a thing it was happening in america it was happening in the uk and people were saying there's just clowns terrorizing people and this has become and it's a theme of this season of the fact that there are just people dressed up as clowns terrorizing the neighborhood and there was a point in either it was either the first or the second episode where ali's fear of clowns has become so escalated um that she starts seeing them everywhere she sees them at the supermarket, she sees them at home, and when you're going through and you're just thinking, is this her brain manifesting this, or is somebody actually terrorising her? And uh, I went down that thought train of thinking, if somebody is terrorising her, her wife has to be involved in this, because it's either in her head, or her wife is terrorising her as well, because there's no other way that the clowns would get into the house. So when it later comes out that her wife does have something to do with it, it didn't seem to come that much out of their field for me because that seed was already planted with the fact that Ali was seeing them in the house. Billy Lord as Winter was terrifying and brilliant at the same time when because she goes in as kind of a babysitter so that she can look after Oz. And some of the things that she does while looking after the child are so disturbing that you're just like, why are they still letting her around the child? You're just there looking at it. Cause it's like when you realize that it's not all in Ali's mind and that Oz is seeing the clowns as well. And you're just like, then why is the babysitter taking them into the neighbor's house where they can see that something is terribly, terribly wrong? Cause I mean, she makes him watch stuff and then later you realise that she's part of it as well. But yeah, I think politics of all of it, I think a lot of people were put off by the fact that it's about, that it seems to be started off with the Trump thing. And it's just like, you need to take a step back from that and just think of it as being set during that time rather than thinking it's about Trump. Because at the end of the day, it's not about Trump. It's not about Trump at all. Ali said, thinks it's the catalyst for everything that's going wrong. But... I mean, I guess in a way, you've got Kai looking at what everything that's happening and thinking, I don't really have something to support, but then he gets manipulated into creating his own cult, which is obviously the basis of the season. And then you realise, as you go even further into the series, that actually, you think it was all Kai's idea, but it wasn't. It was somebody else entirely, not even connected to the Trump storyline at all. When you realise that actually Trump didn't really have anything to do with this storyline, and actually the character that Lena Dunham plays, I mean, I don't know how true the whole storyline that they incorporated it in. Lena Dunham plays Valerie Solan Solanus, um, who attempted to kill Andy Warhol in 1968. And you realise that the, the character of Valerie in the season is actually a big part of it, really. Because even though I think she was only in one or two episodes, there was a whole episode kind of dedicated to it. And then you have other characters come in and you realise that the basis of the cult actually comes from the character of Valerie. And when you see Frances Conroy come in as Big B, and you realise that her connection to Valerie and the relationship that she had with Valerie, and then you realise what she, what BB did to manipulate Kai, and you realise how it all adds up, and you're just like, hmm. Huh. Because Kai believes what he is doing is for men. And then at the end, you realise, oh, actually, it's not about the men. It's about the women. <laughs> There's a bit of a feminist thing going through it as well because of the involvement of the Andy Warhol storyline. It's just, yeah. Because there's not really any supernatural elements to this season, it's all very kind of real person based with the fact that Kai is the one that creates the cult. He gets everybody in. He convinces them to go out and terrorise everybody and kill people. Because when you first see the clowns in the supermarket and you're just like, is she going mad? 
is, is the, are these things actually happening? And then as you go through and you realise that other characters involved in the supermarket scene are actually kind of part of the problem and you're just like, ah, oh, okay. So that's why they were just acting like nothing was happening because they were in on it. Because there's also the fact that there's, there's limited people playing... Because, I mean, apart from Evan Peters kind of going through and playing like Andy Warhol and Jim Jones and... Um, Charles Manson and stuff. Evan Peters plays those characters as Kai telling his followers the story of these incredible people that he looks up to. That's where Evan Peters playing multiple characters comes in. Generally there's very limited people playing the same people in this season because it's more real. Does that make sense? Um, there's not as much of a crossover, I'll say. I mean there's obviously the hint to season four by having Twisted the Clown in there. But the only time that other people come involved is when they're telling the story of Charles Manson. I think this has to be up there as, I think, one of my favourite seasons so far. I think I'd still put Murder House at number one just because it was just such a great way to open it. Um, but the fact that for this season they just took out that supernatural element and was just like, no, this is just real people terrorising real people. And it just makes it ten times more disturbing when it's more real like that. The fact that it's just so relevant just makes it ten times worse. Yeah, it's disturbing but also fascinating at the same time. Um, when you see how certain characters are connected, and as you realise what Ali is going through as it gets worse. I mean, there are times when I didn't like Ali. And I thought she was completely making the wrong decisions. But at the same time, everything that she chose to do was for the child. And so when you realise that at the end of the day, she's trying to do what she can to keep her son in her life. Yeah. I will say, though, there was one point when I thought that Ali was going to kill Kai. There's a point when Ali has a conversation with Kai and she's she basically becomes the chef because uh, she, Ali and uh, Ivy run a restaurant together and so when the restaurant kind of goes a bit pear shaped and Ali's trying to find her way into kind of being with her son and with her wife, she ends up in the cult. Everybody ends up in the cult at some point and there's a point when Ali is having a conversation with Kai and she cooks for him. She basically becomes like the chef um, for the cult. But yeah, she essentially kind of just like becomes Kai's almost personal chef. And there was a point where I was just like, is she gonna poison him? Is she, because she knows that, I mean, the, she was basically given two opportunities to kill him by cooking for him. So the first time I just thought, oh, okay, is she gonna, is she gonna do something that she didn't? And then the second time when you see her cooking for the, for him the same meal, it's just like, has she got? Has she finally? Is she finally gonna do it? And again, she doesn't. But then she uses the method that we think she's gonna kill Kai with to kill somebody else. And you're just like, oh, it feels like there's. But Ali just has a bit of a missed opportunity there. Some of the other things wouldn't happen if she had killed him that early. But yeah, with the clowns and everything, that was bad enough. When you see kind of the rationale behind it, when you finally realise who the clowns are, and when they take their masks off, and there's that conversation of how far they will go for Kai. And the way they use the relationship to Dr. Rudy Vincent to kind of target people. Yeah, that one's a bit weird. It's just so disturbing, and I kind of love it. <laughs> I think it's just because of the comment on politics and the fact that Kai tries to create a problem and then says, I'm going to fix it. There was one scene where he kills somebody else who's in the running for this like a local election. And I was just like, no! <laughs> I don't know why that one caught to me so much because it's a character that we only knew for like an episode. But when he killed her and then I think it was the way he did it. Let's see how much of this is saved, but I'll carry on just in case. I just had immediate overflow and I know I do what that means. The whole thing of just that comment on politics and you realising that it's not just about Trump. Trump seems to be the catalyst based on that first episode, but it could have been any politician, really. Because yeah, it'll happen on the other side as well. I think it did a little bit. When somebody doesn't agree with something, people think it's the end of the world. It's not the end of the world, but 
politics is just such a complicated thing for people because it's stuff about personal beliefs, other people's beliefs, uh, moral codes and yeah I just thought it was really impressive how they talked about it. I, I believe the season was actually quite, it divided people a bit but I think it might be because people were just so focused on the whole Trump thing that they couldn't see beyond it and I just thought it was just really clever how they were just like, it seems like it's about Trump because of when it's set and the fact that they bring in that real life stuff but yeah, you need to look deeper than that because it's not about Trump. It's not. It's just about people and how easy it is to be manipulated. So it's not just Trump that does it. There's so many politicians, there's so many different people in the world. I mean, it's obvious just how they bring in the real life stuff when it comes to like Charles Manson and Jim Jones. There's also a guy called Marshall Applewhite, who I don't really know that much about, but he was an American cult leader who co-founded what became known as the Heaven's Gate Villagers Group and organized their mass suicide in 1997. Because Kai kind of just, you can tell that Kai's lost. And throughout the season, you see him as a person, you also see him as this just crazy psycho kid. Uh, yeah, Evan Peters just in this role was just absolutely incredible, totally believable, and I really did hate him. <laughs> I really did hate him. Uh, but yeah, I've been probably going on for about half an hour. But yeah, so that was Colt. So much said, but also so little said. <laughs> But yeah, I will say that if you're put off by the politics of it, just try to take a step outside of that. Because it's very easy to see the word Trump and think that it's that's the whole thing. It really isn't. You need to take a step back from that and look at the bigger picture. Because if you take a step back and maybe imagine somebody else as being the trigger for Ali, it would still have the same effect. It's just that Trump was an easy target. But yeah, it seems, I think my camera might be overheating slightly, so I'll say goodbye. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, the next American Horror Story video will be Apocalypse. Um, but yeah, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow for another day of Vlogmas. See you later. Bye.